In this video, I'm going to show you 10 quick and useful tips for the superb Affinity Photo. If you find this video useful, then please like and subscribe. In this tip, I'll show you how to mask one layer with another using only a single click. First, we'll create something to use as a mask. In this case, I think we'll use the artistic text. I'll select white from the color palette so that the text is white. The object doesn't need to be white, it'll work with any color. Next, just stretch out the text to get the size and then type something. Typing away, hello. Grab our move tool to center it on the screen. I've got snapping on so it should make it a little bit easier. I think, there we go, that's center. And I'm just going to make it bold. B for bold. And now we have some nice white text over the background. Now I'd like to make this text into a mask so the background shows through it. Now the quickest and easiest way to do this is to right click on the layer containing the text and select mask to below. And there we have it, our background is showing through our text. Because we moved our object down to the layer below as a mask, the underlying layer is showing through any part of our object that isn't transparent. Really cool, really quick and really useful. Sometimes it's really useful to be able to know where your mouse is in coordinates in relation to the image you're working on. Just turn on the info panel, view and studio and info. There we go. Now here are the coordinates of your cursor relative to your image. With the mouse near the top left, you can see minus two, two, etc. If I move to the bottom right, you can see it's now the image size. And that is how you can see your cursor position relative to your image. This is really useful for when you're grabbing and measuring. So if I want to select a box of a certain size, for instance, I'll just select the rectangular marquee tool. Say I want to select a 16 by 16 pixel size box. The W and the H here will show me the size as I'm selecting. So if I just start my selection and then stretch out, selecting away, I can view down there the W and the H is showing me the size so that I can get an exact 16 by 16 box. A great little feature and I think really useful. Here's a really neat feature. There's a really quick way of zooming into objects. Here I have a background and three objects all on separate layers. There's each layer and a background layer. Now if I want to zoom into one of these objects and have it fill the screen and be centered, all I have to do is double click on the layer where the object resides. So for instance, if I double click on the layer with the spider lives, double click, now I'm instantly zoomed in. If I just zoom out a little, you can see I'm zoomed in perfectly. Now double click on the polygon layer, zoomed in on the polygon. Now the text object, there we go, zoomed and centered. Let's just take a look. And now if I double click on the background layer, bingo, we're zoomed back out and we're viewing the whole image. Perfect. That really is a great feature for super quick navigation. Here's a nifty little trick. Here I have an image made up of four layers. I have my background layer and three layers of text. If I want to quickly just view one of the layers, all I have to do is hold down Alt or Option on Mac and select the layer. Hold Alt, select Love, there it is, Love. Alt plus the eye layer is I. Alt plus the dandelions layer is just dandelions. And Alt plus the background, just the background. If I want to see them all again, just Click another layer and they all come back. That's really handy, saves you having to individually turn them all on and off. Here's a quick tip for resetting the patch tool. First of all, I'll grab my patch tool. It's in this drop down here with the other patching type tools. And then I'll create a section where I want to copy to. Let's just extend this crane and we'll grab this area here. That's fine. And that's all well and good. We've copied the area, but say we wanted to just make the patch bigger. We wanted to 
expand it, scale it. We can do that using these handles. We can also use these handles for rotating the patch. But what if we want to reset this scale and rotation? How do we do it quickly? We can use the handles, obviously, to just resize it back to position, like so. Scale it back, which is OK, it works. But it's hit and miss and a bit slow and tedious. Luckily, there's a quick way. All you have to do is just double click on the word rotation here and scale here. And now your patch tool has been completely reset. Nice. There's an underused tool that allows you to really quickly alter the shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. And to access this secret tool, all we do is go to Adjustments and choose Selective Color. Then in the color drop down here, select whites. Now, by using the black slider, we can change the highlights. There we go. As I play with the slider, the highlights here change. There we go, quickly make them darker. If you want to change the midtones, then pick neutrals from the color list. And again, using the black slider, our midtones are now changing. Beautiful. And if you want to change the shadows and blacks, just pick blacks and using the black slider again, alter your black and dark colours. This is just an alternative way of doing this, but I think a really quick way and very useful. I use it all the time. Very handy. Here's a handy hint that once you know it, you'll probably use all of the time. If you want to use a curve, an S-curve, to add contrast in the standard way, let's take a look. We'll go to Adjustments and Curves, then set our midpoint and create an S-curve for contrast, down with the shadows and up with the highlights like so. As you can see, we've added contrast, but we've also added quite a bit of saturation. It's a normal byproduct of adding contrast. Luckily, there's a way of getting around this. All you do is from the blend mode pick luminosity. And now it won't add saturation when you create your S curve. It's really nifty. You now have complete power over your contrast curves. Sometimes we need to add clarity to our image and the normal way is to use the live filter. We'll do that now. First I'll duplicate my layer for comparison. Then go to the Live Filters and select Clarity. Then whack the strength right up. There we go. That looks pretty good. Nice clarity. Let's just compare it with before. Let's turn the layer off and on to see that we have added clarity. But there's actually a better way which gives more pronounced results. I'll just delete the Live Filter. And then with my layer selected, select the Develop Persona and up the clarity. Click develop. Now you can see the layer has much more clarity than when we use the live filter. Using the develop persona gives a much more pronounced clarity effect. And of course I can still control the amount of clarity by using the opacity slider. Fantastic. And that's a handy little tip for quickly adding more clarity. If for some reason you'd like to select a lighter or darker shade of a certain colour, there's a really easy way to achieve this. If I just select my paintbrush tool, and with my paintbrush selected, I would like to paint a colour which is just slightly darker but the same shade as the sky. So if I hold down Alt and click the sky, my paint colour will be the same colour as the sky, like so. But if I'd like a darker colour or a lighter colour, there's a really quick way of achieving this. All I do is go to the colour panel and click HSL on the drop down here. Now we're in HSL mode and so have the HSL sliders. And if I want a darker colour, I just reduce the L or luminosity slider. Just bring it down to the shade I want. And now I have a darker colour, but the same shade and I can paint with it. Lovely. And I can also do the same with the lighter colour. I'll just grab the screen colour again, then up with the luminosity. And bingo, we have a lighter colour, but again, the same hue. And that is a quick way of changing the luminosity or selecting a different shade of your current colour.
And now I'll show you a nice little tip for changing the opacity of your brushes. Here I have a nice fully opaque brush. Let's just draw with it. There we go, 100% opaque. Now I could just go up to the slider to change the opacity or I could use the little number box here. But you can just use your number keys. If I press 5, I get 50% opacity. And if I want, say, 10%, all I have to do is press 1. And for 20%, I just press 2. 100% opaque is 0. And 90% is 9. I bet you're seeing a pattern forming here. I think this is a really quick and useful way to change the opacity of your brush while you're painting.